chosen generation We've been called for to show His excellence hey. All I require for life God has given me And I know who I am We are a chosen generation We've been called for to show His excellence Spirit of the living God, we discuss and we mention the word righteousness. Then we discovered that righteousness is so powerful and very, very strong in the life of every Christian. We mentioned that the knowledge of it gives us freedom and powers our mind towards eternity in heaven, the word righteousness. And we define righteousness as being morally correct or justifiable. It is considered an attribute that your actions or your behaviors are justified. And we mention that the word, those words you see like uprightness, we mention words like blamelessness, we mention words like justice, purity, innocence, perfection, irreproachability, honorableness, godliness. All of these words are strong spiritual words that are very synonymous to righteousness. And we also mentioned, if you remember, that God so loved us so much that He wants our whole righteousness to exceed that of the unbelievers. And we mentioned the reference for this in the book of Matthew, chapter 5, verse 20. We also said righteousness is a long, continuous journey towards eternal reward. It's a long, continuous journey towards eternal rewards. And we mentioned that Noah was the first man mentioned in recognition and association with righteousness in the Bible. You remember we said there is no one that is righteous except God himself. We mentioned some characters of the righteous person. We said the righteous do not slander, they don't backbite, they don't discuss people behind, the righteous are not harmful. And we had reference for this in the book of Psalms, Psalm 15, verse 3, you remember? And also we went to Psalm 15, verse 4, we said the righteous honors those who honor the Lord. And the righteous are the ones who flee from anything that has to do with blasphemy or ungodliness. The righteous, we said, they associate godly, you remember? The righteous, we said, they do not change the world they don't change as the world change. The righteous are always in there. They constant with the word of God. And we said again that the righteous don't inherit the punishment from four parents or generation past. And we mentioned strong word that says judgment and punishment are so specific. We had reference for this in the book of Ezekiel chapter 18, verse 2 to 4. You remember? Nobody remembers Pastor Owen. So, in the book of Ezekiel, chapter 18, verse 7, we also said something very significant. We said the righteous are non oppressors. The righteous, they keep promises and, pre and pledges to men and makers of men. The righteous don't take whatever does not belong to them. We said the righteous are selfless, sacred in services, and they are not mean, but they are very merciful. We went ahead to the book of Ezekiel 18, verse 8. We said the righteous are not money marked, but they are messianic. We mentioned that the righteous say it and see things the way God will see it or say it. Ezekiel chapter 9, chapter 18, verse 9. We said the righteous walk in the wheels and the will of God as well. And we said, how can we become righteous? Remember that topic? So topic? Yes, I remember. So righteousness is one of the godly attributes that no man, we said, can achieve on their own. You cannot achieve righteousness by your own effort. The book of Romans chapter 3, verse 10 said, none is righteous, not the one. And Isaiah 64, we mentioned verse 6, it says, our righteousness are like filthy rags. You remember? Yes, we mentioned the law. And uh, we concluded, as, as the Lord lived, righteousness increases directly with faith 
You remember that aspect? When the Lord spoke to us and said, as a matter of fact, righteousness increases directly with your faith. And that's why the only diet that you can survive on as a Christian is faith. If you ever want to be righteous in life and destiny. And we had reference for that one in the book of Romans, chapter 1, verse 17. Somebody said, the Lord is good. So today, again, the Lord said he would discuss with us through his spirit, spiritual dynamics of righteousness. Spiritual dynamics of righteousness. Spiritual dynamics of righteousness. Tap somebody, tell them to write. Write something down. Write, write. Learn to write something down. If you don't write it, it is not so right. Whatever that is written becomes right and righteous. And that's why you see in the Bible that it is written. It must be written. It must be written to make it righteous. So spiritual dynamics of righteousness. So this process is called imputation. 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 To input means to represent the word input. Imputation. To represent, to credit, to accredit, to lay on, to connect with something, to stick on something. As read by one of the ministers, Isaiah 53, verse 11, he says, He shall see of the travail of his soul. This was written about our Lord Jesus Christ by Prophet Asaph. He shall say of the travail of his soul, and shall be satisfied by his knowledge, shall my righteous servant, that is Jesus Christ, justify how many? Many. 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 For he shall do what? Yeah. Bear their iniquities. So the sinless and the blameless Son of God, Christ Jesus, don't forget, we are discussing spiritual dynamics of righteousness. How righteousness works. What powers righteousness to work? How does we come about? What are the forces that bring righteousness to work in your life and my life? And we have defined the word imputation. And the whole process in theological time is called imputation. We mentioned what that word means. And now I'm trying to explain it. Now. The sinless and blameless Son of God, that is Jesus Christ, took humanity's sin upon himself and became the willing and perfect sacrifice. He took up our sin, Christ Jesus, upon himself, and he became the willing and perfect sacrifice. Note the instruction of God. For the relationship and fellowship with God the Father to be restored, there must be blood sacrifice. You remember? That was fall, as recorded in the book of Genesis chapter 3, when the humanity failed God completely. For this relationship to be restored, for this fellowship to become functional, there must be blood sacrifice. And this must be pure and holy and acceptable unto the God in the Father himself. So the sacrificial soul we are talking about here, Jesus Christ, takes the suffering. And the punishment that humanity deserved through a process called imputation. So God the Father accepted this sacrifice through which human beings now become righteous. So believers will receive righteousness. Note this very well. As a believer, you receive righteousness from and in Christ Jesus, from Jesus Christ, and in Christ Jesus. That is where your righteousness lives and lies. So Christ's righteousness has been inputted unto us. The holiness, the cleanliness, the blamelessness of somebody, Christ Jesus, has been given to us as human beings. So brethren, the free gift of righteousness in Christ According to the book of Romans, the 5 verse 17, who read this? It's what we call grace. And I will read that, Romans, the 5 verse 17. It says, For if by one man's offense, Romans, the 5 verse 17, 
Killed by one man's offense, death reigned by one. That is Adam and Eve. Much more, they which receive abundance of grace and what? And of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one, Christ Jesus. So, believers, back to that point we made last week. We made that at the beginning of that communication last week or in between. That the only fundamental, the only functional or functional criteria for righteousness is faith in Christ Jesus. So there is only one way to be righteous and that is what? The faith in Christ only. If you do not have faith, if you don't believe Jesus Christ, the Son of God, if you fail to believe he died on the cross for your whole remission, if you fail to admit, to believe, and to walk in his resurrection after three days, if you fail to believe he's coming back again, then you are not righteous as long as God is concerned. Note this, children of God. Salvation by grace in Christ Jesus distinguishes Christianity from other religion. That's Romans 5.17. Salvation by grace. Distinguishes Christianity from other religions. Other religions require works on behalf of the members, participants. Before they can be saved, you need to work for it. You need to strive for it. You need to get punished. You need to be destroyed severely before you can be saved. Salvation by grace in Christ Jesus distinguishes Christianity from other religions. So we are not justified by the works of the law, but through faith in Christ Jesus. Galatians chapter 2, verse 16. Otherwise, the death of Christ becomes useless. As Galatians chapter 2, verse 21 says. Let's read Romans chapter 3, verse 21 to 26. Romans 3, 21 to 26. But now, the righteousness of God, Romans 3, are you there? Yes, sir. Verse 21 to 26. But now, the righteousness of God, without the law, is manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. This one happened on the month of glorification. This verse 21 is referring to that one. But now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophet. You remember when Christ was on that month, he was praying, and there appeared Moses on one side, and there appeared Elijah on the other side. Read it when you get home. Verse 22. Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus, unto all, and upon all them that believe, for there is what? No difference. Verse 23. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Verse 24. Be justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Verse 25. Whom God has set forth to be brought in creation through faith in his blood on the cross to declare his what? Righteousness for the remission of sin that are passed through the forbearance of God. To declare, first thing to see now, say, to declare, I say at this time, his righteousness, that he may be just and the justifier of we, the justifier of him who believes in Christ. You see, that's Christianity. And that's why you are different from other religion. You are justified by your belief in Christ. So it becomes shameful when your belief is not strong in him. It means the righteousness is not going to be demonstrated in full flesh upon you. So let's read the book of John chapter 3 verse 18 for analysis reasons. For some of us who was in the Bible service session today, which year was John? The book of John 18. Which year was the book of John 18? <laughs> Somebody said I was not born then. 
Yes. And that's why it's good to be in the Bible study. We discuss it today. We mentioned it. Some of us, when we're looking for a job, that's when we look for the book of Job. So I will need a job because that is like job. I'm looking for job. <laughs> Hallelujah. So let's read John. Don't miss it next Sunday by the grace of God. It's very informative and very powers you. You are not a Christian without the knowledge of the word of God. I learned myself today. God bless you, Daddy. God bless you, sir. That was very good. I learned myself. You, immediately you stop learning, that means the person is dead. Don't be too proud. Don't be too huge and say, I've known everything. You don't know anything. Let's read that John 3:18. He says, he that believe on him is not condemned. John 3, 18. But he that believe not is what? Already. Condemned already. Those who do not believe Christ, they are in condemnation already. You don't need to dispute it. Because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten son, the only sacrifice that made you righteous. He's a very strong one. You are righteous, not by your own effort, not by the work of law, not by your own attribute, not by your own effort, not by your own omission, but the righteousness of somebody, and that is Christ Jesus. So whoever fails to believe in him, they are condemned already. I want you to be strong and be fortified in these worlds. Because these are the things that will maintain, keep you going until Christ comes. So righteousness works only for those who believe in Christ. If you do not believe in Christ, you are not righteous. Those who do not believe in Jesus and the Son of God, they are content already. And this is what I'm trying to say scripturally. Unless you are covered by the righteousness of God, Christ Jesus himself. God does not see you sinless. Unless you believe in him. That makes you covert. That makes you righteous. Until then, you are still sinful. You are still an iniquity. More so. You know, the rulers of this world, the wickedness, these principalities of darkness, the demonic world, they still see you guilty. You are still guilty and punishable to them. And that's why majority will continue to be in bondage. Majority will still continue to be in struggle until they are able to identify with Christ, believe in him, and that's when they receive their freedom. I see loads of image and the likeness of God that he made his own likeness, his own image. Their eyes are covered. Once you are not a Christian, your eyes are covered. Because there are certain things you should have in terms of power which you don't have. Their eyes are covered from the works of the cross. They don't believe in it. As, as long as they don't believe in it, it does not work for them. They suffer spiritual ignorance. And some people that are very good in English, they will say, it is not only ignorance, but they are ignoramus in spirit. <laughs> it's the same word, but they just make it bigger. So they do not identify with Christ, let alone his sacrificial works on the cross. And so they are not righteous before God. They are not. Don't judge them, but go by that. They are not righteous before God because they don't believe in him. Let's look at the reward of righteousness. Before we go to the reward, the spiritual dynamics of righteousness is so simple. Someone in the prison is taken out. And Christ Jesus decided to put himself in that prison. Somebody in the hospital bed is taken off the bed. And Christ now lies down on the bed. Somebody who's meant to be in the deportation camp is taken away from there. And Christ takes that position. People wearing garments that are half inscription of punishment. That have inscription of death by hanging on it. That have all sorts of things, insulting, embarrassment, disgrace, death, sickness, all over their garment. What did Christ do? He removed his own garment, put it upon them, and now take their hope. 
That is what we are talking about. Christ has taken away all that is meant to be your punishment. He has taken away your trouble. Until in spiritual realm, you are able to connect to that extent. It does not work for you. Until you are able to connect that. Look, the battle I should be fighting. Somebody has fought it. Hallelujah. The words of righteousness. Brethren, I appeal to you. Walk righteously. Speak righteously. And you shall be named after the nature of God. This is not in your own account, don't forget. But Christ credited righteousness. The righteousness of God, Jesus Christ, is now given to you. Did we all get the illustration? Did we all get it? I was trying to get the graphic image. But the time wasn't enough. I wanted to get it for you so that you see how the garment that you are wearing, how dirty it is, and how God Christ Jesus, Jesus Christ took that garment off him. Now gave his own clean one and said, Where well, is You are free. And it's the punishment that you're supposed to suffer. That's what we are talking about. It is not in your own account, but it's Christ credited righteousness. The Bible says in Isaiah chapter 33, verse 15, we're looking at the, the words now, the word of righteousness. What comes after you will have that righteousness of God going through Christ Jesus? And we'll be reading Isaiah 33, verse 15. Isaiah 33, verse 15. In the word righteousness, are you there? Thank you. He that walk righteously and speak uprightly, he that despises the day of oppression, that shake his hand from holding of bribes, that stop his ears from hearing of blood, and shut his eyes from seeing evil. First, the next one now says 16. He shall dwell on high. Are you there? In space of defense shall what? Munitions of rock, bread shall be given to you. Its water shall go Thy eyes shall see the king in his beauty. They shall be the the land that is very far off. With this one, you don't need its application. These are the words that come with you. Once you are able to walk uprightly and do the things of God, and you connect to the righteousness of God, not your own righteousness, it works for you. As you are the righteousness of God through Christ Jesus, the eyes of the Lord are upon you as well. First Peter chapter 3, verse 12. For the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous, and his ears are upon their prayers. First Peter 3, 12. But the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. And the book of Psalms 34, verse 15 says the same thing. He said, The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous. And the ears are his ears are open unto their cries. Another reward. Number three reward. Brethren, as your whole righteousness is being replaced by Christ's righteousness, this is what happened. There lies life in your path. Proverbs chapter 12, verse 28. Proverbs 12, 28. In the way of righteousness is life, and in the path thereof there is no no death. Note this: your prayer works wonder as Christ's righteousness for the medium and the mediator for all your request. That's another reward for you. I will see. We can see the evidence for this scripturally in the book of James, chapter five, verse sixteen. James five sixteen. He says, confess your faults to one another and pray one for another that you may be healed. The effectual, vapid prayer of a righteous man. I feel it more. Number five, benefit. Righteous reward. As a righteous person, sir, your nature, note this very well, this is good for somebody. As a righteous person, your own nature is traded for Christ's nature. And you therefore display the compassionate natures of Christ. 
you become kind. Your whole nature is now replaced by the nature of God. You become more merciful. You become merciful to others. You do good to others. What am I saying here? You understand the feeling of other people. You don't just judge people. You put yourself in their shoes before you make comments and condemnation or criticism about them. Proverbs 29, 7. said, the righteous consider the cause of the poor. Proverbs 29, 7. The righteous consider the cause of the poor. But the wicked regarded it not to do. The, the wicked are the ones I don't care. <coughs> I don't want to know what you're going through. I am not bothered by your situation. But a righteous man will put themselves in your shoes. Say, God knows what she's going through. We didn't see her in church last week. God knows. She missed work last week. God knows. Maybe, maybe, maybe we need to pray for him or her. Those are the natures of Christ that you get when the righteousness of God is working in your life. But immediately you start from a position of critical or criticism for somebody or for a society or for a system, then you question your righteousness. Number five or number six. Every righteous person has unlimited access. Say unlimited access. Unlimited access. We are used to unlimited internet, isn't it? <laughs> but this one is unlimited access and right to the blessing of God. Once you are able to connect through imputation to the righteousness of Christ Jesus, that yes, I am righteous in Christ. I am the righteousness of God through Christ Jesus. Then you have unlimited access and right to the blessing of God through the Son Jesus Christ. The book of Psalm, Psalm 5, verse 2, 12. Psalm 5, verse 12. It says, For thou, Lord, will bless the righteous with favor, without compassing, as with a shield. Seventh, the reward. We are looking at the reward of righteousness. Number seven. Righteousness of Christ powers and delivers you from captives and bondage. I told you many are in bondage. Many are in captives. Many are in snares. Many are in pit. Because what? Their eyes are not open. They are spiritually ignorant of what God has done on the cross. And that's what we are talking about here. Proverbs 11.6 Proverbs eleven six. He says, "The righteousness of the upright shall deliver them." Proverbs eleven six. But transgressors shall do what? Shall be taken in their whole nothingness. Number eight. Tell somebody that I'm enjoying this righteousness issue. <laughs> It's so simple, isn't it? Somebody says they are enjoying it and they are found their face. It's like somebody is spreading the goodness of Jesus and saying, Jesus is good. And you are squeezing your face. Is he that good? <laughs> Number eight. As you demonstrate and carry the righteousness of Christ, death, what we fear so much, every human being fears death. Death has no power over you. The book of Job 3.25. Job said something. He said, that, 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 fear so much happened to me. I am begging you, brethren. If your fear is death, then he will keep chasing you all the day long. If your fear is sickness, then he keeps chasing you all the day long. Fear nothing, but have the fear of God in your heart. And that's the most important thing. So, as a righteous person, you have power over death. This is because the one whom you are stuck in or grafted in, you know, we said about imputation. Christ will remove his own target. Very pure, unpunishable. Put it on you. That is meant to be hung, to be put on the road and killed. That one that the Lord has done is confirmed in the book of Isaiah 25, verse 8. The Bible says, according to Prophet Isaiah, that this man coming that I said about, I am writing about, it will swallow up death in feet. Isaiah 
Isaiah 25, verse 8. He will swallow up death in victory, and the Lord God will do what? Wipe away tears. Isaiah 25, 8. He will do what? Wipe away tears. From where? All faces. And the rebuke of his people shall he take away. He will take away your rebuke. He will take away your shame. That's what God is telling you there. You know, as a righteous person, my son, there are certain prayers you don't need to pray. I was about to be here again, start to rebuke those ones that are here that will block or hinder or distract the word of God. And the Lord says, that is what my righteousness has done. There are times we waste our time on certain prayer point. The battle that the Lord has won years back. He delivers you from death. Proverbs 10 2. He says, treasures of the wickedness. Profit enough. Proverbs 10 2. But righteousness delivered from death. Do not live your life panicking about death. Show me who is not going to die. Number nine. The righteous are timely testifiers. Covered by ever refreshing grace. Don't forget we link righteousness to grace. Covered by ever refreshing grace that fails not. Psalm 1 verse 3. But thou, O Lord, and shield for me. Psalm 1 verse 3. Are you there? My glory. If you are not there, just look up. The multimedia are very fantastic always. But thou, O Lord, hast a shield for me. My glory. And the lift of my head. Verse 4. I cried unto the Lord with my voice. And he held me out of his holy hill. Number 10. The righteous are people without past. They are what? They don't have past as far as sins are concerned. They have no past. They have no past as far as sins are concerned. Once you are able to connect with God did on the cross, once you are able to connect with that blood that was shed for you. Once you have failed in what Christ did on the cross, his suffering, his punishment, his death, his resurrection, his promise of coming back, you don't have past as far as sins are concerned. Majority